We are finally back from our long break with season two of the Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast. I'm Rebecca Wilhelm. I'm Mary Quigley. And I'm Hope Wilhelm. So it's been a while since we've brought you a story from the spookier side of the Hoosier State. So what comes to your mind when you think of Indiana? Do you think of corn? Do you think of basketball? Do you think of the Indianapolis 500? Maybe you think of famous celebrities who were born in Indiana, like John Mellencamp or Michael Jackson. But as the saying goes, there was more than corn in Indiana. 92 counties make up the Hoosier State. In this podcast, we are going to discuss some Indiana folklore from each of these counties. If you are into tall tales, ghosts, or spooky legends, then this is a podcast you are not going to want to miss. In this episode, we are going to discuss some popular legends about some Indiana bridges that legend says are haunted. In doing research on ghosts, we are always surprised at the amount of ghosts and legends that seem to be centered in or around bridges or overpasses. In fact, we've already covered a haunted bridge in episode six when we discussed the legend of the Purplehead Bridge in Vincennes, Indiana. So many bridges are the scene of accidents, death, and tragedies. When you think about it, it seems pretty reasonable that many of these locations may have a ghost or a legend associated with it. In this episode, we're going to discuss some of the most well-known haunted Hoosier bridges. We even have a legend about a bridge in Indiana that has ties to the 1893 World's Fair. first things I noticed when we started doing our research is that there are a lot of ghost stories associated with the old train bridge in Avon, Indiana. So we're going to begin our episode there. According to the Bridge Hunter website, the bridge is called the CSX Avon Bridge. It was built in 1907 for the Big Four Railroad. The bridge was built to cross a ravine in the White Lick Creek. The bridge looks really neat and is something called an open spandrel arch design. And I'd not ever heard of this, so I had to Google it. And according to the Ohio Department of Transportation website, an open spandrel arch has, quote, a vertically curved concrete slab, but instead of solid spandrel walls, it has vertical columns supporting the floor beams and a deck slab, usually all constructed of concrete. You can see the columns in the picture. Very cool design. It says that this design was also popular because the area on top of the arch and under the deck is open and can be inspected easily for damage. The bridge is still in use today. Avon, Indiana is a small town located in Hendricks County, Indiana. It is about 14 miles west of Indianapolis. Its close proximity to Indianapolis is an important detail to keep in mind because it being close is important to one of the legends about the bridge. A good place to start with the legends about the Avon Bridge would be the legends that I read in Ronald Baker's book, Hoosier Folk Legends. And the first legend in Baker's book comes from the Indiana State University Folklore Archives. And it was collected in Indianapolis in July of 1969 from a 20-year-old student at Indiana State. According to Baker's book, there is a ghost of a mother who haunts the Avon Bridge. The legend is called Mother's Ghost Calls Baby at the Avon Bridge. Here is where Avon's close proximity to Indianapolis becomes important to the legend. One night around midnight, there was a mother walking along the tracks on her way to Indianapolis to take her sick baby to see a doctor. 
the railroad tracks allowed for a shorter walk to Indianapolis. Well, the mother got about halfway across the bridge when she heard the sound of the train, and in a panic, she begins to hurry. In her haste, she caught her foot in one of the ties. She was able to free her foot and run, but it was too late. Suddenly, the train was upon her. When it blew its horn, she got scared and jumped off the bridge. According to this version of the legend, the mother lives, but the baby was thrown from her arms in the fall and is killed instantly. Well, the mother goes crazy and dies about a month later. According to the legend, you can hear the mother's cries for her child whenever the New York Central train comes through there at midnight. Another legend in Baker's book is called Ghost of Boyfriend Screams at the Avon Bridge. Well, this legend is also part of the Indiana State University Folklore Archives, and it was collected in May of 1972 by a 21-year-old male student from Indianapolis. This legend claims there is a ghost of a teenage boy who haunts the bridge. What happened was the boy was dating a girl who lived across town. He stayed too long at the girl's house one night and had to rush home so that he wouldn't get in trouble for breaking curfew. To save time, he decides to cross the old bridge. He got about halfway on the bridge when he heard a train and saw the light coming. It's dark out, so he is not exactly sure where he is on the bridge. All he knows is there is a train heading straight for him. The boy decides to jump, and as soon as he jumps, he realizes that he has jumped at the worst spot possible on that train bridge. According to Baker's book, quote, It's said that on a dark night, you can hear a train whistle, and a few seconds later, the scream of the boy who jumped. The creepiest and most popular ghost story is about the construction worker who was killed when the bridge was being built. Yes, if you do a Google search, you will come across this legend about the worker. And accounts seem to differ on the race of the man. Some legends will claim that it's an African-American man, and others say that it was an Irish worker. No one knows the identity of the man or his race. Some legends you will find call him Dad Jones. The legend that is told says the man fell while working on the bridge. He fell into the cement and was killed. Well, the creepy part is that instead of helping the man out of the concrete, they just left him there. And there are some versions of the story that say he was killed instantly. Others say he yelled out for some time for help before passing. Supposedly, the workers just filled the structure in because it would have taken too long to get his body out. A more gruesome version adds that they cut the man's foot off because it was poking out of the concrete and then filled in with concrete and just went on their way. Many claim that if you look closely at the side of the bridge that is close to the road, you can see the outline of this worker's pick and face in the concrete. Wow, that's crazy. Well, the next bridge you will see posted online is the Danville, Indiana Bridge. The Danville Bridge is interesting. It's called the Twin Bridge to Avon. It's built in the same design as the Avon Bridge. Yeah, there is an identical story in Baker's book as the Avon Bridge, also about a construction worker that falls into the concrete. Many people speculate that since the bridges are close in proximity to one another, that over the years, people have the stories mixed up. I could see that. We see you. You're a dreamer, a visionary, the master of your own destiny. But what people don't tell you is that dreams aren't always easy. You probably feel weighed down and frustrated by all the little tasks that steal your energy and time. Good news, we can help. Becky and I have started a new business adventure called Quigley Virtual Services. We offer a wide variety of services to streamline your business and give you back your time. We can help you with everything from setting up and managing social media to proofreading and editing. Check out our website, www.quigleyvirtualservices.com. You can also find us on Facebook or Instagram. The next haunted bridge is in Lawrence County, eight miles southwest of Bedford, Indiana. The Williams Covered Bridge was built in 1884. The ghost story of this bridge is because of an accident that happened before the bridge was covered. According to the Indiana Haunted House's website, there was an accident with a man on horseback. Apparently one night, a man was riding his horse across the bridge when for some unknown reason, the horse jumped over the side of the bridge. 
So something creepy is that supposedly you can hear the man screaming and the horse if you find yourself on the bridge around midnight. If you take a look at the message board for the bridge on the Indiana Haunted House's website, there are people who have posted their experiences visiting the bridge. One of the most common things that people seem to experience is hearing a horse when one is not present. Yes, that seems to be a common thing that happens. Well, people can say that they hear footsteps on the bridge. They also say that they've heard the sounds of children, especially a little girl. That is really interesting because there are no known accidents or legends involving any children with the bridge. None that I could find anywhere online. We will be back with another Haunted Bridge legend after a short break. Our podcast is growing and it's so exciting to see all of our new followers on social media and many downloads of our podcast. Most of our listeners come from iHeartRadio. However, we are on all the major podcast platforms. If you like what you hear, please don't forget to give us a five-star rating on whatever podcast platform you are listening to us through. Your comments and likes help others find us. Thank you for tuning in to the Hoosier Mess and Legends podcast. Now back to our show. Our next haunted bridge comes from the San Pierre, Indiana in Stark County, Indiana. Ooh, we're going to talk about the dog face bridge next. And this is a really creepy legend. Dog Face Bridge crosses the Kankakee River. The bridge is also called Ode County Bridge Number 99 or CR 1100 West Bridge, but got the name Dog Face Bridge from an accident that's rumored to have happened back in the 1950s. Apparently, the legend that is most talked about is a newlywed couple was driving across the bridge sometime in the 1950s. As their car crossed the bridge, they encountered a dog and swerved to miss the dog. Well, unfortunately for them, this meant that their vehicle went over the side of the bridge into the Kankakee River below. According to many different accounts of this legend, the bride was killed instantly and decapitated. Since the 1950s, people have encountered a woman on the bridge, and this is where it gets really creepy. She's missing her head. In place of her head is the head of a dog. If you look at the message board on the Indiana Haunted House website, you will see a lot of people discussing their encounters out at Dogface Bridge. Many of them describe hearing and seeing the apparition of a woman hearing dogs growling or barking in footsteps. It's definitely very creepy. So we are going to end this episode with a legend about another bridge that crosses the Kankakee River. The Duns Bridge in Duns Bridge County Park in Porter County. This bridge does not have a ghost story associated with it, but it is tied to the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. It's a really neat story and such a cool looking bridge. According to a March 10th, 2016 Northwest Indiana Times article titled The World's Fair Bridge by Doug Ross, most historians agree that the bridge was built by a farmer named J.D. Dunn, with whom the bridge and park is named for. The Times article says that the bridge is 180 feet long and it crosses the Kankakee River near County Road 500 East in Pleasant Township. Legend has it that the steel used to build the bridge came from the original Ferris wheel. Yeah, the very first Ferris wheel made its premiere at the 1893 Columbian Exposition in Chicago. I have seen pictures of the wheel According to Ross's Times article, the wheel stood 264 feet high and it held 36 cars, each of which could hold 60 people. So according to the Times article, there is a debate on when the bridge was built. Some say it was made from steel beams in the 1890s. Other people say it wasn't built until 1904. That is when the original Ferris wheel was taken down. Some people disagree with this story because if you look at the bridge, the top of the bridge does not resemble a Ferris wheel. It is arched. It does look like an arch shape. It does, but this may be explained by another legend. You see, the beams may be used from Machinery Hall that was at the fair. You see, Machinery Hall burned after the World's Fair, and according to the Times article, the steel was sold for scrap. 
Oh, this would have happened around the time frame that the Dunn Bridge would have been built. So I googled Machinery Hall, and it does look like the beams could be very similar. It's such a neat story, and there is no way we could do an episode about bridges without including this bridge. It is a neat story. Do you think they will ever solve the mystery of if this bridge really is associated with the World's Fair? I believe there's enough evidence to suggest that it might be tied in some way to the World's Fair. Well, the Times article mentions that the park had a metal test done, and that test determined that the steel is made from the same place as the steel that was used to make the first Ferris wheel. That's kind of neat. I agree. I think the bridge is tied to the fair in some way. Well, when the weather gets better, we will have to make a trip out to the Duns Park and see this for ourselves. Have you heard about any of these haunted bridges before? Are there some bridges we missed? We would love to hear about them. Please send us an email to hoosiermissandlegends at gmail.com. We may use it in a later episode. In the email, let us know if you wish to remain anonymous. To see our source material, please visit our website, HoosierMythsAndLegends.com. Please find us and follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Hoosier Myths and Legends podcast is a Quigley Virtual Services production. Our theme song was written and recorded by Wet Blanket. The song title is Taxidermy Racecar. As always, stay spooky.